participatory mapping approaches to study how our landscape uh, landscapes change over time. Her other passion is related to geospatial education and skills development, and this is the topic of her presentation today. Uh, Nina, welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see, good yes. to see everybody. Um, thank, thank you very you. much for for having me here today to talk. Really yeah, excited. Thanks, thanks to, for joining. Yeah, I will share my screen now and uh, hopefully yeah. things will work out well. So the title of the talk will be Social Innovations in GYCT Education at Tanzanian Universities for Improved uh, Employability. So uh, yes. the stage is yours, Nina. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see my slides well? I hope so. Ah, um, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Indeed, today I'm talking about um, collaboration project that we have just recently started between eight universities, five of them in Tanzania and uh, three universities in Finland. And here you can see my colleagues and the coordinators of the project, their names and affiliations to different universities. This project is quite exciting. It's about um, how, I, how we can improve geospatial and ICT education at uh, Tanzanian universities in order to increase the opportunities of the students and graduates to utilize their skills in more effectively for the impact in the society. And on the other hand, increasing their employability opportunities. We all know, of course, that um, Geospatial data and technologies have made a major global accessibility and impact leap over the last years. And these had, had led to very promising technological innovations all over the world. We are more or less rapid, like witnessing rapid growth of digital data collection initiatives, mapping and monitoring solutions. And many of these by far majority is based on open data affordable technologies like mobile phones, earth observation data and methods. When we think of the rapidly developing countries um, in the global south, these kind of technologies open up a new avenue for, for solving various environmental so and social problems that these countries are facing today. And uh, what we need to, of course, understand is that many of these real world problems and needs, they are complex in space and time. They are very dynamic. And when we utilize technologies and data for their solution, we have to be rather clever in the ways we are going to build these, these uh, solutions. We have, of course, seen already vast amount of really cool local um, solutions of technology and data that are able to address major planetary challenges like rapid urbanization, degradation of marine and coastal environments, or for example, humanitarian crisis. What is quite ex exciting now is that many of the innovations that are related to geospatial technologies, they actually happen in the elastic interface between data and technologies potential, and on the other hand, society's emerging needs. Solutions which are contextually clever, they or adaptive and are driven by local talent, they have stronger opportunities to flourish and create sustainable, sustainable development solutions. When we think of this opportunity space for the universities, we have a challenge at hand. Of course, we are training new generation experts for the society to solve together with the problem owners, these multidimensional challenges. We all know that new students and graduate, they need to be very strong in their data and technology skills. But it is not really how technology savvy students are, but how do we strengthen their intellectual understanding of the complex real world problems? I believe very strongly that students more and more need coaching into proactive and participatory ways of working together with those whose problems we are trying to solve. That is the way we can turn these universal tools and open data into locally relevant and impactful solutions. 
If we think of Tanzania as an example of a geospatial and ICT education country, um, I have a long co collaboration established with the universities. We have been doing geospatial and ICT development for more than uh, 15 years now. And of course, during that time, we have seen huge transition from analog to digital. And many universities in Tanzania currently have taken very giant steps in terms of the skills development to different programs focused on GIS skills, basic data and technology skills, and so forth. And there has at the same time been multiple coexisting initiatives and investments into education and capacity building, and also a lot of projects in the society that have been, have been addressing a need of, of data. And these type of uh, changes have enabled us to create the current project. Of course, universities still have a lot of challenges. One of the things is that um, universities are far too theoretical in their scope. There is a lot of students enrolled in the programs and there is still limited amount of practical skills training. On the other hand, staff, staff and staff skills and capacities have improved substantially, but there's still a lot of new ways to learn how to, how to develop education and learning opportunities that are inclusive and accessible anytime and anywhere for the students, instead of sitting in the classroom, for example. What is quite important for the success of a transformation of learning into social innovations is that students adopt more entrepreneurial mindset, that they understand their role as problem solvers and not only following somebody's predetermined ideas. This requires, of course, skills in multiple spheres, not only within technology, but also within the society and many types of soft skills that are related to their professional careers. How do we then create these type of transformative learning environments? They are definitely only possible to create when in, in close collaboration with the problem owners. They don't happen in a conventional classroom or learner in structure setups. What challenge-based learning methodology or learning approach means is that students would need to step from their conventional learning environments to co-creation spaces where they are able to create new ideas and solutions with the owners of the challenges. This type of uh, challenge-based pedagogy means for the teachers also that their role is different from the conventional role of a university teacher. We as teachers, we have to urge ourselves to create those environments which inspire students to deconstruct and reformulate actionable challenges based on the real needs. We need to move from lecturing to being mentors and coach for the students and the, their capacity. Our GICT for E project is focusing on designing and implementing socially innovative learning environments for five Tanzanian universities. The way we are doing this is a, is a meta effort between all eight universities and various stakeholders in the society. What we are aiming to organize is five challenge campaigns in 2022, which are implemented by each uni Tanzanian university and their teams. And we make a close connection and partnership with innovation ecosystem actors and different stakeholders and problem owners in the society. What we are looking forward is to having a more or less two to three months long challenge learning campaigns where we have around 50 to 70 students from each university from multidisciplinary origins. So we are, we are coupling geospatial and ICT students with entrepreneurial students, geographers, environmental scientists, social scientists, and so forth. These campaigns will focus on improving students' competencies at the same time in multiple competence domains. So we are on top of this challenge-based methodology, we also aim to be to secure that our students 
knowledge is improved beyond the technology domains. And how we're going to do this technically in Tanzania is that the students are in these campaigns during their industrial placement period, which is a compulsory element of the Tanzanian curricula for undergraduate students. And they then have a longer break, break in their university from contact teaching, and they are able to engage themselves into industry interventions like these CBL campaigns will be. If we talk about those multiple competencies that I was referring to, on top of the domain of geospatial data and technology skills that you can see on the, on the bottom left, we really would like to encourage students not only to innovate any type of uh, social innovations or solutions, but those which actually are climate smart and resource efficient in the current, amidst of current crises on this planet. We want students to have stronger sustainability and resilience skills. And this is something we need to integrate into these multi-learning multi campaigns that we are organizing. In order for students to be proactive, cooperative, forward-looking and understanding the needs of the problem owners, we need to strengthen their professional confidence in entrepreneurial thinking, and we also need to train them to understand and analyze the problems which they are trying to solve. These type of theme specific skills are, of course, something that, for example, geography as a subject quite often addresses. On top of the multi-domain skills, these four different elements of learning, learning the skills, we will use quite substantial amount of digital assets for the learning opportunities. You heard earlier today the presentation of Silicale about the Resilience Academy. Resilience Academy is implemented by these universities which I'm talking about. And we have already a nice database of nearly 150 database, data sets of, of various cities in Tanzania. And of course, we are building as a consortium of universities, several mini MOOCs, which are like mini learning entities that are online openly available. And these mini MOOCs will address those four skills domains so that the teams can learn the skills they need for their problem solution anytime, anywhere, together on their own or as they like. Some of the things that the universities will also do as part of the project is to invest on, on those digital technologies and tools that students need for improved accessibility of the digital learning assets. So we are improving the internet conditions, the laboratories, the mobile tools and technologies of these institutions. These are all critical enabling elements of the success of our project. This gives you an overview of how the GeoICT for E methodology fits into the broader framework of innovation ecosystem. In the middle, you can see our co-creative challenge campaigns and the multi-competence learning environment. Entrepreneurial innovation skills complemented with climate sustainability and resilience skills, tech and data skills, and understanding of the problem spaces. We are coupling our collaboration tightly with the, with the hubs and different innovation ecosystem actors like data laboratories. Hopefully some of the students, when they discover their solutions during the campaigns, they can get some continuation support with their innovative ideas. What we wish to see, of course, is a growth of private sector, new businesses and ideas, the starts up, and incubation processes that then may in the long run feed services for the society, which desperately needs good solutions to, to, to solve the complex problems that are currently disturbing the sustainable development of, of these countries. How do, how do our project's methodology then fit into Resilience Academy? You earlier on heard about the industrial training model that um, Silicale was telling you about. As we see it is that the students who have gone through the 
industrial placement, they are rather ready to be taken to another level of more complex learning and working in multi, multi skills teams, more on their own, driven by the idea of coming up with innovative ideas. One of our key collaborators in Tanzania is Sahara Ventures, which, which has been um, pushing forward innovation ecosystem strongly in Africa. Their headquarters is in Dar es Salaam, and they are experts in turning innovative ideas into businesses. Sahara Ventures will be together with the universities mentoring the student teams, and we will rely on their support on identifying which of the solutions of the students is worth taking forward if we think of opportunities for business and, and a further development of the ideas. What about the teachers then? When we are working in this project as a multidisciplinary team between eight universities, we have, we have around 50 to 60 experts in this project. Um, we are experts of different kinds and different talents. We basically work in smaller teams. Some of us are experts on designing challenge-based learning methodologies. Some of them are curricula and e-learning experts. And we also have those experts who are then specifically dedicated to contribute to the different uh, skills domains, the four key skills of the students, the climate, the data, the innovation and theme specific matters. If we succeed in this project, we would like to see substantial improvement in the way Tanzanian universities are offering their learning opportunities for the students, that they can repeat this type of learning environments and, and campaigns for the added value of their current curricula. What we would like to see is thousands of students being exposed to different e-learning assets via our mini MOOCs and digital data repositories and investments. If we succeed well in our, in our learning campaigns, of course, we, we are keen to see, and this is what we are observing in the project, is the actual growth of the student skills once they have gone through these MCL campaigns of two to three months long. And this is something that, of course, I would be love, it would be lovely today to tell about the results, but due to COVID, we are a bit delayed with the implementation of the project, and hopefully one year later, I'm able to tell more about the results. But what I think and what we all believe in very strongly is that when we put students to multi-competence challenges, the challenge-based learning um, spaces, we are particularly increasing those skills that are the future skills of the graduates. Critical thinking, creativity and innovation capacity, collaboration skills and communication skills in order to turn their technology data and domain specific expertise into meaningful and impactful solutions and better employment. I will finish my presentation today just by laying out a few long-term expectations from an intervention like this. When we invest on open access learning opportunities of the students and more, more co-creative learning spaces, of course, we make education more accessible. We make it definitely more relevant and influential. And we do believe that this creates better employment opportunities for for rapidly growing amount of graduates from higher education institutions in a countries like Tanzania. We hope that the, the experience of organizing joint learning events will last long because it's a win-win combination. On the other hand, win-win to the universities who can give out their students as valuable assets for the society and for the society who then gets more skilled graduates to solve their, their societal problems. We do need think that creation of future digital jobs, it needs to be done in a co-creative manner because nobody knows yet what type of jobs our future graduates will work on in a, in a rapidly digitalizing world. I will stop with this one and I, 
I'm happy to answer if there are any questions. And if you want to look at our links, here is a list of links. The geoict.org is the project webpage. And then we have the Resilience Academy webpage there, the Geonode, the data repository, a short video that introduces you to the Resilience Academy, and then also link to our paper regarding the presentation. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the talk. Uh, I, I, I did my best to provide the links at Venulis and also Sli Kale also uh, shared a couple of links and um, he's continuing sharing them. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, there are a couple of questions from the audience from the Venulis and um, one is saying where should we start on identifying location-specific focus points to be integrated in the university curriculum? Hmm. I wonder what, what, what the question particularly relates to now, how to answer that. Um, uh, well, I mean, I just, course, yeah, you can please open up oh, if sorry. you have an idea. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe it's related to the in getting, providing connection with the, with, with, with the sector, with the work, uh, we read the activities outside of the university to better prepare the students during the university uh, education. So if someone wants to integrate this approach to another university and another company and in another country, sorry, uh, where, where, where should one look at to identify what to integrate into the curriculum? Well, it's a very relevant question because I think we are in the, in the edge of rather new thinking of how the geospatial education should be constructed in the future in the future world. One of the main arguments is that geospatial is going to be mainstream. It's no longer a sectoral issue. So if we want to train our university graduates to be competent with location-related problems and technologies, we need to start embedding those into multiple disciplines. And to, according to my understanding, this is a major challenge because we are always, when designing curricula, we are within our own disciplinary boundaries. So these type of extra, I would not call them extra curricula, but co-learning environments which fit into multiple curricula is a way to integrate students coming from dis different disciplines, then mentored by different disciplinary experts into solving geospatial problems. So it's kind of a new way to think how to how to how to create um, uh, learning environments how to identify them i would simply look at the world which is so full of geospatial challenges and and try to kind of think that the any curricula in the current university needs to address socially and environmentally relevant questions and and via that designing a curricula is beyond the the technology and data skills if we truly want those things to matter, then we have to have to be able to make the linkage between the data and technology knowledge and know-how to that of the problems that we are addressing. I don't know if I'm answering to the right level because it depends a bit how what, what the question is about. What comes to our methodology, we are putting everything openly accessible, including a, a um, playbook of the methodology, how to implement it. So what we are hoping is that after one year, we can publish the handbook of how to how to make CBL campaigns with our approach. And then I would be happy to see other countries taking that methodology forward. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the answer. Um, hope it was insightful uh, for people watching. And um, next question there is uh, about the MOOCs. Um, do they provide any assessment and certification to the attendees. So what type of assessment is there, is there in the MOOCs? Okay, so idea what we have here is that we are creating mini MOOCs that are globally accessible assets for anyone to use and blend into their local teaching. When they are open access and they are short in, in length, so I'm talking about mini MOOCs which do not go beyond one or two days for a student as a learning experience, then any local teacher anywhere can just grab the entity and include it into the curricula or the course syllabus of his or her own. And then the assessment has to be done locally. So we are not creating a mini MOOC where we can do global assessment. It would, 
it would require enormous uh, effort into the facilitation. Besides, the idea is that the innovations happen locally. So if you blend global, like you have global data and you do something with it locally, then you address the right context and right issues, right? So why not do the same with the learning materials? Take our mini MOOC and use it locally as you like. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I asked that question because the university that I'm teaching in, we are offering elective uh, courses through MOOCs and uh, it, it's kind of open-ended. So we, we are asking the students to come up with bundles that have four or five ECTS worth. And then, uh, but the thing is, uh, our university is asking for assessment and then certification to validate those MOOCs. So we are not doing assessments uh, on the university side, because of again the volume of the, the volume of the MOOCs and certificates coming um, come coming to the university, so that's why I asked because I was quite interested in to integrate those MOOCs into I uh, offer those MOOCs as uh, elective courses at the university that I'm teaching as well. So that was I was asking. That's why yeah. I was asking. Thank yeah, you. I think it's a very relevant question, and I would like to address that these are more like nuggets of learning rather than courses, self-standing courses. Mm -hmm. So they, they focus on, on teaching a skill or competence, and then it's up to the local teacher to, to contextualize it and evaluate it and assess it if he wants to do that. <laughs> okay, so, 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 so yeah, that, that, that workload is on me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, if we do we have any questions from the chat if not uh, you can have one or two more minutes if you want to add something or or go 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 uh, go through something if you like i am happy i think uh, please feel free to contact me if you want to ask more questions me on silicale as well and i think it's been a pleasure to talk today and um, it's late afternoon already here in finland but I know that it's morning, <laughs> morning up in the headquarters of this conference, but it's really nice. I wish everybody happy weekend. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your participation and thank you for the great presentation. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot for the uh, great talk again. Um, in two minutes time we are going to come back with nicola roland uh, for his speech but uh, we have two minutes uh, two minutes of breathers until then thank you <laughs>